Hello, and welcome to Improve Performance, Save, by specking the right steel for truck and trailer bodies, a truck and trailer body builders webinar. I'm Mindy Long, and it's my pleasure to be your host for this event. Before we begin, I'd like to explain how you can participate in today's webcast. If you experience any audio difficulties or trouble with advancing the slides, please press the F5 key to refresh your screen. You can also get help by sending a message through the chat function and a member of our team will be in touch. We have a lot of time for your questions and answers. Type your question into the box on your screen at any time and click submit. We'll answer as many as possible following the presentation. If we don't get to all of the questions today, we will follow up with you after the webinar. This session is being presented by Steel Warehouse and Tata Steel. Steel Warehouse, with 12 locations across the U.S., Mexico, and Brazil, processes and fabricates flat rolled steel into a variety of forms. Tata Steel in the Netherlands is a top quality steel producer and has a long lasting business relationship with Steel Warehouse in making specialized steel products available to the American market. The grades and materials used in commercial truck body and trailer manufacturing are among the most important considerations in the manufacturing process. Selecting the right steel has benefits, including, including improved performance and less maintenance. Most importantly, choosing the right material can save end users money in the long run. However, it is important to know which material is best for specific applications. To help dig into material selection, as well as the trailer and truck forecast for 2022, we have three industry experts joining us today. Don Aik, Vice President, Commercial Vehicles at FTR, has more than 20 years of experience in the transportation industry, including 16 years with industry supplier Hendrickson International. Don has a very strong forecasting and market analysis background and is responsible for forecasting Class 8 truck and trailer demand. Edwin Medenblick has over 25 years of experience as a material engineer and manages Tata Steel's Europe, Tata Steel Europe's customer technical services team for North America. Edwin started his career in Tata Steel's research and development department. His research and expertise focused on steel stamping and forming technology. Theories were put to the test in Tata Steel's extensive product application center, providing real life knowledge on product performance and behavior in the end application. For the past 27 years, Gordon Ashaban has been Executive Vice President of Development for Steel Warehouse Co., a leading producer of premier slit coil, sheet, plate, and tube products. In his role, he is a key leadership team member, an active participant in developing the company's strategic goals and identifying business opportunities that maximize the company's performance to achieve profitability goals. His insight and capability are built upon 44 years of experience in the global metals industry, including 41 years of in-field experience where he worked closely with OEM consumers and metal producers. Thank you. To our speakers, I am now going to turn the time over to Don, who will get us started. Thank you. Thanks, Mindy. Um, today, we're going to look at the uh, the dump market and do an overview of the dump truck, dump trailers uh, situation and get a better idea of um, where we're where we're going in the market. Uh, what I like to ask uh, at the beginning of my presentations are what is going on here? Now what is going on here? Well, we're into the worst supply chain shortage, product shortage environment since World War II. And it's been that way for a long time. It's been that way in the trucking industry for at least since November 2020. It showed up there first. So it's the worst conditions that we have been in in commercial equipment in modern times. Now, many product components are experiencing partial and late deliveries. Uh, you know, the main one on the truck side that you've read about are semiconductors, but there are a lot of other components in short supply. There's been some minor improvements lately, but we're not looking for uh, a, a big improvement or a fast improvement. 
or a sudden improvement. We're looking for a gradual improvement throughout the year. Uh, the shortage of labor is a, uh, a key issue right now. Until the supply of workers increases, the supply chain is going to remain an issue. So that's a key thing uh, that's pervasive in other industries, but it's very, um, very big factor in ours. You have pent up demand existing for dump trailers and dump trucks. Uh, people want more trucks and trailers, they can't get those trucks and trailers. So uh, the demand is not being met and, and may not be met for a long time. However, with the passage of the in infrastructure bill, um, you're looking for more projects there. And we'll see in a moment, the housing construction picture is very bright. So we'll move on to the economic and freight factors. Um, just a brief view of the things impacting the dump truck and trailer segment. Uh, first, we'll look at industrial production. And we see, you know, this will be a pattern in all these, in all these slides that you see the dip in 2020 with the pandemic and the lockdowns, you know, so you see industrial production sank, then you saw a strong recovery in 2021. Now, in 2022, um, the year's going to start off strong with industrial production, but then it's going to ease back. But still, at the end of the year, you're about average, about trend. So we're still looking for a strong year in the industrial economy. Now we'll look at uh, construction spending a little bit just to see where we're going. Here, you see the same dip in 2020. Uh, things kind of stayed at the bottom for a while. Then you saw a nice recovery uh, in 2021. This is showing year over year change. Uh, so this sort of peak, but we're still at, you know, 9%, 8% year over year growth, which is still historically uh, very strong. So construction spending is, is very good. However, when you look at the public um, spending, construction spending, you see a big dip, but you don't see a comeback. It stayed, um, it stayed negative for an extended period of time. That's because the, the, the states and the cities and and the, the the federal government pulled back their spending on public uh, construction projects. The good news is, if you look at where it was back in 2019, uh, we have an opportunity to grow here. So with the infrastructure bill passing, there's an opportunity for a lot more um, public uh, spending. And so then I, I noticed I skipped over my slide here, residential, to compare. Residential has been growing rapidly out of the pandemic and hit like 30% year over year at one point. It's down off of that peak, but the housing market has been strong and, and we'll see um, in a moment, uh, continues to be strong. So you have residential taking off and the public spending um, lagging, but having the potential. So now we look at truck loadings. This chart shows both flatbed and bulk, but actually we're just interested in the bulk part, which is the red line. Once again, you see the same thing. The dip, the fast recovery, the mellowing out, now, the dotted line is a forecast. So we see some variability in the next few months as, as things try to balance out. The key thing here is once you get into the second half of the year, this is looking for bulk freight to grow at 5% rate year over year. 
historically a very strong rate. So we're going, we're going in the right direction. And this looks like an excellent, uh, an excellent year for um, bulk freight. The next thing we look at is dump trailer loads originated. Just how many, how many individual loads are carried by dump trailers um, going anywhere for any reason. The reason that I included this graph in the, in the set here is that this one is forecasted through uh, 2022. So once again, you see the dip, you see the recovery, you see a little flattening out, but now once we got to the middle part of last year, we started to grow and that forecast for 2022 is very good. High level, two things good about it, high level of trailer loads and continuous growth upward, which gives you momentum into uh, 2023. <clears throat> so now we'll look at some of the numbers that specific numbers that have to do with um, the trailer truck outlook. Here's dump trailer orders. Well, you see back at the beginning of 2021, orders were, were high. They've dropped off at the end of the year, but that doesn't mean demand dropped off. Uh, the trailer OEMs are managing the backlogs. They're not entering all the orders that they have. So um, concentrate on the times when the orders were very high. What's happened recently is just saying we have a lot of orders in. We're not going to place more orders in the backlog. So speaking of backlog, here's what the, the dump trailer backlog looks like. Very high, almost touched the 4,000 level. And you see back at the beginning of the graph, during the housing bubble, 2005, 2006, it actually, dump trailer backlog was actually 5,000. That was a record. But if you look where 4,000 is historically, very high. Now we're down from that level a little bit because of the, the orders haven't been that great recently, but the backlog's very strong. Um, you get into the trailer build love numbers and you see the effect of the supply chain, flat. So demand is very high, supply is restricted. So you can almost draw, draw a straight line through that the last year and things have not increased much at all. So how does this look on a quarterly basis? On a quarterly basis, um, you see similar quarters in Q2 and Q3 in 21. A drop off in Q4, but the reason is one, it's holidays, and two, the, the dump trailer market is somewhat cyclical. So it it did it did decrease a little bit there. So what are we looking for this year? We're looking for first quarter to be back to where we were in Q2 and Q3. Then Two big increases in Q2 and Q3 of 22. Now, it's not going to happen without supply chain increases, without some improvement in the supply chain. If the supply chain doesn't um, increase, doesn't improve in Q2, that Q2 number will probably look like the Q1 number. So this is based off a premise of an improving supply chain and then Q3, very strong, and Q4, not a big drop off because we got to catch up with, with demand. How does that look on a yearly basis? On a yearly basis, we're seeing a nice improvement of in, in 22 over 21. Again, you've got to have more pieces, parts, uh, and a little bit more labor to do that. Then you see a great year in 2023 still probably constricted some by the supply chain, um, and then a cyclical drop-off in 24, 25. 
However, if you look at the years 22 through 25 from a historical basis, this says the market's going to be great for four years. All right, so let's look at the truck side. We don't have specific dump truck data, but we'll look at the closest thing that we have, which is related, and we can make inferences out of that. Here's Class 8 work truck U.S. retail sales. Now, not all Class 8 work trucks are dump trucks, but a lot of them are. But you see the sales are limited uh, by the supply chain. You almost have, and, and you, that, that spike in December is just semi-completed trucks being completed by the OEMs to get them off the books, to get them into sales at the end of the year. So we're not going to repeat that in, the, um, in January. The number will probably be back down to slightly over where it was in November and October. Our forecast for work truck sales next year, I'm sorry, not next year, this year, is 13% over last year, which is a very healthy gain, um, but again, constricted by uh, microchips and other supplies. We can look at Class 8 U.S. retail sales. Once again, not all Class 7 trucks are dump trucks, but some are. So in general, the retail sales have been flat. If you want to look at how the supply chain flattens something out, that's what it does. We are looking for retail sales to increase 8% this year in the Class 7 segment. I just threw both of these curves and the trend lines on a graph just to show you the Class 8 work trucks and the Class 7 retail sales um, have been uh, have been in the same boat since coming out of the, the pandemic, uh, following the same trends except for that December spike. So they're very much related and very much impacted by both the, the shutdown and the supply chain difficulties on the restart. So what does this all mean? The outlook for the dump market segments coming out of the pandemic, very favorable, strong momentum. However, the production is still going to be constrained by the supply chain. You know, how much depends on how much we can build. We are still expecting moderate but steady improvement in the supply chain throughout 2022, which gives us an opportunity for growth in this sector. The major risk is the economy is the economy. You've got inflation out there, you've got interest rate hikes on the horizon. This can slow economic growth. Um, it can limit new home sales. It can even delay the infrastructure projects if it gets too messy. So FTR, we put out a variety of reports on the transportation industry. I and mean, one of the reports that could be interesting to this audience is our trucking update, which just gives an overview of the freight numbers and the trucking situation and some forecast data thrown in. Um, if you want a copy of the presentation, here's the link. It will be included in the resource section of your um, of your video feed, and you can um, you can get a copy of the presentation that way. Um, this concludes my part of the presentation. I will turn it over to Edwin to talk about steel. And thank you, Don, uh, and a warm welcome to everybody else to the second part a piece of this webinar. My name is Edwin Medemlik, and I'm the manager for the technical service that we provide to our direct customers in North America, but in many cases also to their customers. The entire value chain is important to us. And here we have a, a quick look at the, at the topics before we head into the actual content. First, a couple of words on our company. 
Tata Steel in the Netherlands is part of the Tata Steel Group. Tata Steel is one of the larger steel companies in the world with an annual steel making capacity of about 33 million tons. In the, the Netherlands, we have an annual capacity of seven and a half million short tons in a fully integrated primary steel production process. The product mix that we make there consists of hot rolled, pickled, cold rolled, galvanized, pre-painted and tin plate steels. At this one uh, site, approximately 9,000 employees have their place of work, not only to make the steel, but it also houses, for instance, a large dedicated R&D department of 250 researchers. The mill complex is strategically located near Amsterdam on the coast, operating its own deep sea ports to bring in the raw materials, as well as exporting finished goods. Continuous upgrading of our equipment has led to a capability to produce high strength steels in extreme dimensions that is probably unsurpassed by many other coil producers. With this unique capability, we concentrate on the heavy equipment and transportation industry next to the automotive packaging and construction markets that we serve. In North America, we offer an extensive range of specialized steel products through our 60 years business relationship with Steel Warehouse Company. Through our partners at Steel Warehouse, we can offer you steel with shorter lead times and tailored to your needs, as if we were present locally. Our high strength steel Impress 100 XF has been successfully introduced to the North American market in 1996 and over the years, it has accrued a substantial market share and loyal following. And through our extensive interactions with the heavy duty truck and trailer industry, it became apparent to us that there was a clear need for some additional specialized steels based on a high quality coil product. Abrasion resistant steels are a good example of products that could benefit from an alternative coil based offering to the market. Since 2015, we have been working on the development and market implementation of Valast 450. Since the introduction, we have been successful with the conversion of AR plate steels to our Valast 450 strip steel, as we can offer some distinct benefits compared to the alternative offerings. To effectively fight wear, we need to understand it first. We can, look, uh, we can do that by looking at uh, scientific theory. If you open up a textbook, the first thing they say is that wear is not an exact science. So that's not really helpful. Out of the 182 wear models that have been suggested by scientists over time, the Hornbogen modified archer seems to be the one that is useful to understand the needs for a successful abrasion resistant steel. Archer, the mother model for all wear models, suggests that by increasing hardness alone, the wear rate decreases at an even pace. Later on, Hornbogen discovered there, that there were diminishing returns from just increasing hardness alone. He added the importance of material toughness to Archer's model to reflect this. If you analyze the resulting wear model, it will show you that hardness and toughness are the main intrinsic steel properties that influence wear resistance. Next to that, the model also recognizes surface morphology and friction as important to the wear rate. I think we can all intuitively link these parameters to wear. The heavy duty truck and trailer industry, as well as many refuse trucks and cement mixer companies use AR450 as their workhorse product. Wallast 450 has a nominal Brunel hardness as for, of 450. There's probably not too much difference in the hardness level between the different AR steel manufacturers. But with impact toughness, however, things become a little bit more interesting. Tata Steel's Wallast 450 comes with a standard impact toughness guarantee of at least 20 foot pound at minus 40 Fahrenheit. Many AR steel providers cannot guarantee this important parameter or charge a premium if they do. The world-class surface quality from our strip product can have an influence on wear as well. 
aggregate can slide easier on a smooth surface than on a rough surface. And although not the most important thing when fighting wear, I do want to give you an indication of the product strength. Valast 450 is actually the strongest hot roll product that we produce on our hot strip mill with a yield strength of about 180 uh, KSI and a tensile strength of 215. The high strength offers design engineers many opportunities to create a structurally sound end product. As there are different types of wear, the relevant types for aggregate for wear sensitive units are sliding wear and impact wear. The dominant wear type depends in practice on the size of the particles. Sliding wear for aggregate like sand and small gravel and impact wear for larger rocks. It would be great if there was a simple inexpensive laboratory test that would predict wear behavior of materials for all aggregate types under all field conditions. For sliding wear, there is a test that comes close to these criteria, and it is ASTM G65. In this test, Fallas 450 is reproducibly at least two and a half times more abrasion resistant than structural steel grade 50. ASTM G65 helps in ranking different materials' ability to resist sliding wear, but is at the same time still a simplification of reality. For impact wear, however, there is no standardized test available. We see specific custom test setups at various institutes with little to no standardization. Most probably, this has to do with the large number of variables that determine wear behavior. As there is no laboratory test that accurately predicts wear in the field, many bodybuilders rely on experience and field testing of prototypes before they can launch a new design. As such, this is a good method, but it can become time consuming and expensive when you have to go through design iterations with the need for new prototypes in every iteration. Some of the field testing can be replaced by virtual prototyping. At Tata Steel, we have developed some models to better, better understand wear characteristics of different end applications. We have developed models for dump bodies and cement mixers, and we are working on refuse trucks. Our models are aimed at gaining a better understanding of the application. Combined with the OEM's know-how and experience, it can reduce the design times. Let me show you some examples. We use specialized modeling software to digitally mimic in-field wear load cases. In this example, the impact is studied at gravel and rocks exhibit on a dump trailer body during loading with an excavator. These powerful computer models enable us to study what happens to the trailer surface. It makes it possible to compare different design options, different materials, and different aggregates. The output also allows a look at the structural loads caused by these infield load cases. And here's another example of one of our models. In this example, we look at what happens when an end dump trailer empties. Spheres of four inch in diameter will slide out and push the tailgate open. In the right hand picture, you can see the accumulation building up of the contact energy as the load slides out. This is the driving force for the wear of the trailer. We can change our model to your vehicle design and we can change the aggregate size as well. Using modeling like this in the design phase provides the opportunity to test different configurations and assess its uh, impact on the expected wear. If we use the outcome from the previous example, we can plot the results and compare different steel grades to one another. The output allows you to compare the wear of a modified bucket with design modifications or changed materials with one that you have experience with. As you can see, the grade 50 or lower Brunel AR400 experiences much more wear than Velast 450. And you can already spot the diminishing returns from the next step in adding Brunel hardness. Of course, the selection of a steel grade depends on other considerations as well. 
Personally, I think Ballast 450 is in the sweet spot in terms of durability and workshop properties. And here you can see a model for a cement drum. Understanding the wear pattern as a result of the flow inside these drums is important for selecting the right material and material thickness at any given location. Alternative fin geometries can also be studied easily. Ge geometry files from most conventional 3D CAD modeling programs can be loaded into our so software packages to do so. Together with Steel Warehouse, we have put some of our models to the test. You can see the model shows a good uh, co correlation to the reality. And because our products need to perform in reality, Steel Warehouse has performed an array of tests in real life to validate its behavior. If you would like to engage in a more technical discussion with us, or if you'd like to run our modeling software with your vehicle design, we would be more than happy to have a more in-depth conversation. Contact details will be shared at the end of the Steel Warehouse presentation. This is a good moment for me to hand over to Gordon Abishan from Steel Warehouse, who will share some of those uh, practical examples with us. Thank you, Edwin. I'll be happy to take it from here. I'm Gordon Abishan. I'm with Steel Warehouse Corporation. We're based in South Indiana. We have multiple locations throughout the US, also in Mexico and Brazil. We do a number of things with car carbon steel coils. We pickle, we shear, we slit, we cut to length. But one of the things that we become a leader at throughout North America is the temper pass leveling process. We run eight of these lines, and it's these lines that give us the capability to process these super grades of hot, hot roll coil. We've had this relationship now with Tata for some 62 years. They've been an essential partner to our growth and, and our own development. And this long history together has given us decades during which we've developed and launched super grades of a variety of types throughout our marketplaces. We're a supplier to major OEMs throughout the Americas. And as we are to small shops making smaller gauge projects. We've 75 years now at this. We're, we're, we're good at it. As we look at this first slide, you'll see some of the products that this product that we're talking about today goes into. As you move to the second slide, you'll see the shot of Tata. We, we value them as the premier hot strip mill producer of hot roll coil, ultra high strength in the world. The middle shot, you'll see one of our temper pass cut the link lines. The right shot, you'll see finished goods. All of this that we're putting on the floor is strip mill plate. That's plate from coil. And we'll talk about some of the differences of strip mill versus discrete. There's positives in both categories. Uh, but in the last 450, I think you'll see that many of those, uh, those pluses associated with the strip mill AR blast are significant. Moving to this chart, and we look at the AR as it's developed across the last 75 years, all of these products still really exist from a 200 Brunel hardness through a 650. Now, there's a mix of these. They're made both as discrete, where an individual plate is rolled one at a time, and then after rolling, it's quenched and tempered to give it the properties that uh, make it hard. In the case of the strip mill variety, there really is no post quench and tempering, certainly not through the 400, 450, 500 Brunel sweet spots. We list 450 Brunel as a sweet spot because it's the dominant item that many of our customers uh, insist upon having. Moving to 500 or higher may give more wear resistance, but it also makes it diff more difficult to fabricate and adds to some of the cost. So as we talk about 200, you'll, you'll see it still in products like cement mixer bodies. T1 was invented by US Steel and the name is no longer owned, but you'll see it in the marketplace as an A514. It's a great product. It's about 100 yield. If it's not tempered, it comes out to about a 360 Brunel. And for, for decades, much of my professional life, 360 Brunel made as discreet was a leader. Now, as we'll talk, you'll see these sweet spots rising, not only continuing to be produced as discreet, but as made from, from strip mill product. Now, Edwin touched on a lot of the benefits, and I'm going to just touch on them again briefly. And, and, and some of the stuff, certainly uh, that Edwin described, uh, is complex. And if you're interested in knowing more about it, 
Edlin and I are both field guys. So we're the guys from both of our corporations that will come out and visit your shop and show you how we can save you some money and make a better product. Looking at this slide, you'll see in the left the 49% less surface friction and roughness. But you saw Edwin's slides, they were good ones. Uh, these slides were taken in our shop at Steel Warehouse, and they're showing the uh, profilometer reading of strip mill versus discrete plate. A uh, profilometer simply is a device that measures the roughness of the material. But the smaller the number, the smoother it is. The larger the number, the rougher it is. You'll see it on that strip mill column, 48, 66s, 52s, as they compare to a discrete plate, 119s, 98s, 112s. It, it's a big difference. And, and this, this smoother surface gives you a lot of things. First, it gives you less friction, so the material moves on it properly, and the plate wears better. Secondly, and I'll move to that slide, you'll see an 89% higher gloss. These are expressed in gloss meter readings, the uh, interpretation of which is just the opposite of, uh, of the profilometer here. A higher number means smoother. So on strip mill, you'll see a 65 versus a 35 on discrete. What these numbers give you, and what a number of our uh, premier OEMs ask for, is a very high gloss surface so that they don't have to put so much time, money, and expense into preparing the surface to achieve a high gloss paint finish. And in many cases, we see a gloss meter uh, requirement on materials that we provide, be it an AR or even uh, one of the lower grades. Now, what all that means in the field, here's a good example of a truck body where you'll see on the tailgate, discrete plate being used. Discrete plate's a great product with some real advantages. The surface isn't one of them. Notice the pits. And some people will fill it with body putty in their shops or they'll sand it down or they'll primer it two or three times because what every one of us wants generally is that automotive finish. As you'll see the side plate here and the close up, it's got, that's a finish without any special preparation because you're starting out with a surface mill, uh, a strip mill surface product that just simply gives you a, a better, better paint job. It'll save you a lot of money in a shop and it looks a whole lot better on the, on the showroom. Now, moving a bit further, because we are talking about the AR450 Velast here. These are the dimensional availabilities that are produced by Tata uh, Holland presently. Uh, briefly, it goes down all the way to an 080 product and all the way up to nearly a half inch. However, those lighter shaded areas, contact us for availability. As we're seeing the primary demand and hold much of our inventory in the 118, a three millimeter, through a 315, an eight millimeter. Now follow the chart to the width. The biggest single advantage that Tata has over every other strip mill AR producer on the globe is the width of their mill. They can make these products up to 81 wide. There's been strip mill AR for a decade or more, but it's generally been limited to 48s and some 60s. It, it really hasn't gone beyond that for the most part. There are a few mills now playing with 72s and the like, but none of them are capable of going to that full 81 inch width. And it really comes as no surprise to us as we sell this product that much of the demand that we receive is in that, uh, that very maximum width range or certainly in the 72 inch width range. We keep steel on the floor that were, is available for immediate trials and sales, but broadly, once we start a relationship, we keep custom widths of those coils. We can cut all of them into custom lengths, of course, and then we hold material as coil and some as processed products so that we can release and get it to your, your shops quickly. It takes us about three months to get new material from the mill, and it takes us about two weeks from our shop in a coil form to process it and ship it in, into your location. No presentation unless you have a uh, map somewhere in it, and here's ours. Uh, this shows many of the steel warehouse Learman Enterprise locations, not all, but the ones that are key and important to the strip mill product as it goes into a temper pass cut the length line. You'll see the Monterey, Mexico. We were the first uh, company to install and take that technology into Mexico. We're in the Monterey area, and then later we were the first to take it into, uh, into the country of Brazil. Uh, we've gone foreign primarily because we have many customers who are also foreign and they've asked us to come with them so that they, they can benefit from these strip milk plate uh, features that, we, that we're talking about. But coming down to the next slide, the next slide talks about how you reach us. Give us a call. Again, Edwin and I are field guys. You know, we'd like nothing better than to talk to you on the phone, invite you into our shops, take you to the mill if you'd like to see it. 
But most importantly, come into your shops and show you how we might save you a few dollars. And those few dollars can be significant. You know, take advantage of the opportunity that this new development is bringing to the marketplace. Save the money. Spend it on your families. Give a couple of bucks to a favorite politician or not, whichever you prefer. But give it a try. Let us tell you more about it. Let us bring it into you as sample pieces, as sample skids, as the first sample truckloads. And I think you'll find that you'll have a more profitable business and a better product as a consequence of it. So I look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, call us. Let us know where we can meet you at or what you want to talk about first, and we'll jump in to save you some money. So on that, I'm going to turn this over to Mindy. Are you there, Mindy? I am. Thank you so much, Gordon. So much great information. And we do already have several questions that have come in from our audience. And I do want to remind our audience members that they can type a question into the question box on their screen. Um, but for now, I'm going to jump off. And Gordon, the first question is actually for you. And that is, are Tata and Steel Warehouse thinking about launching AR500? Yeah, absolutely. We have a number of customers that have asked about it. And I'll tell you why 500 is important to Steel Warehouse from, a, from an, an origin standpoint. Uh, we're also an armor producer at Steel Warehouse for the U.S. military and played a leading role in the MRAT development. And if you guys aren't familiar with armor, I think many of you guys are, 500 Brunel has been a bullet-stopping figure that's been used for, for generations. And... It also then pushed us into some 600 and 650s. But we have customers that say, we'd like to step up to 500 from 450 Brunel for our, for our bodies. And some say they don't want to. Some want to step back to 400. But whether it's an advertising issue or an actual performance issue, um, Edwin, I'm going to let you explain where we're at on the trial side of that business. So, uh, Edwin? Yeah, thank you, Gordon. Uh, I'm just... Happy to say that we have made our first coils. That we're going to test those out in our uh, in our own facilities, uh, and then we uh, will be looking at uh, customer orders. Okay, good. And we're looking forward to supplying those trials to you guys. All right. Keep in Perfect. mind, we talk, and we talked about strip mill plate. You know, the real benefits of strip mill are for those people using lighter gauge. You know, the street goes all the way up, as you guys know, well into the three inch, four inch, five inch thickness range. These strip mill products at these strength levels are limited really to the, in popularity, to the three eighths and under range. And keep that, keep that in mind as you go forward and we look at uh, how this best fits your shop. All right, and our next question I'm going to direct to Edwin, and that is, will Tata design my, uh, excuse me, will Tata design my dump body? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, my answer to that would be, Mindy, uh, with our in-house knowledge and software models, I think we are well positioned to assist uh, companies during their design process. Please contact us for further details. Okay, Gordon, next question is for you. Will you keep custom sizes in stock for customers? We do it every day. Uh, in many cases, we buy some standard widths because many customers are accustomed to working with 60s, 72s, or now 81s and 80s. Uh, but we have a lot of customers that want to buy a 63 width or a 59 width. And with the appropriate volumes, because everything is a minimum uh, product of a coil, we'll bring in custom widths. And of course, we can always cut to custom lengths. One of the major saving features is lowering your, uh, your utility loss and having less side trim, less end trim, and consequently raising your profitability. Okay, next question. I am going to jump here and ask, um, what size trucks are your last 450 recommended for class size of truck? You asking that one of me, Mindy? Sure. It's recommended for all those classes of truck that design their bodies around three eighths and lighter. If you've got a, an application where you have a one inch thick base bottom or a half inch thick side, you know, you're pushing the limits there on what strip mill plate will bring to the table. So most specifically, those customers of you that are using quarter inch, let's say, or three sixteenths, but want to go lighter and find that your discrete mill provider won't go lighter than three sixteenths. In the case of the strip mill, we'll take it down one step to a four millimeter, another step to a three or a three and a half, or even a two, as you've seen from these, uh, these availability charts. So taking weight out of the product, really at no additional 
price increase to the material, which is a remarkable feature of strip mill. It's, it's made in a fashion that, that um, the tons per hour are so significantly higher than rolling one individual plate at a time that you'll save weight with a product of thickness that hadn't been available before. So think of us for the thickness range you see on my current slide. And that's still not up, it's 079 to 472. Okay, great. John, this next question is for you. How do you see gasoline prices affecting the trailer demand outlook in 2022? We've been watching the diesel prices closely. Uh, we would expect some moderation going out. Uh, the price right now is 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 very high. We're uh, Again, we're tracking it. I don't think that we've made any changes to our forecast um, due to gas prices. And I think the thing is, um, it, it could affect freight demand slightly, but it's not going to affect equipment demand. There's too much pent up demand there. So gas prices would have to get high enough to impact the economy in order to do damage. Now, you combine that with inflation, you could have an issue. But right now, it's, I would call it manageable, but worth watching. Okay, very interesting. Um, Edwin, this next question is for you. What do you suggest for low boy trailer manufacturers who are currently using 100 KSI steel, but would like to reduce weight overall? Um, I'm not sure if I uh, caught the first part of the question. I mean, would you repeat that? Um, yes. Let me pull that back up. Um, it is. I had just moved it, so I have to get it back. Um, what do you suggest for low boy trailer manufacturers who are currently using 100 KSI steel but would like to reduce weight overall? Um. I think uh, from 100 yield to 450, there will be a, a substantial weight uh, saving opportunity. Uh, the, the differential in uh, Brunel will be somewhere close to uh, 100 points or more, as Gordon uh, referenced earlier. Um, and that will give you uh, the opportunity to re reduce the thickness that you would need on the bucket and have to save life. And let me add a little to that, Edwin, if I might. You know, I'm in the field most of my time, and, and a number of our good customers make them both ways. They'll make AR bodies, and oftentimes it's a 50-50. Sometimes it's more AR, a little less 100. But 100 yield is extremely popular, generally as a strip mill product, even though when you saw my chart, T1 is the original 100 yield discrete. And it offers some advantages. It over In some years, it offers a lower price, uh, this last year, price was just all over the charts, and we saw ARs going cheaper than grade 50s for, for moments within the market. But it's a companion alternative. You know, I think to most shops that you can make parts of your body out of it, the grade 100, maybe use the AR450 only on the bottoms or wherever else you feel that the wear resistance is of most need. The two grades are very compatible in terms of welding one to the other. The chemistry differences are are very clear, or chemistry differences are, are rare, but the chemistry similarities are, are, are close. And we're a major stocking uh, processor of the Dutch's Empress 100, as well as 130, 140, 160 yields. These are all products we'd like to talk to you about. Okay, good. Gordon, this next question is also for you. Um, you had mentioned looking into applying this to waste hauling applications. Could you please explain that a little bit more? I'm sorry, to weight, what applications? Weight decline, reducing weight? Uh, when when speaking specifically about waste hauling applications, um, could you explain hauling. that a little yeah. bit more? Yeah, yeah what, it's a waste hauling is a big category. You know, when we look at just plain garbage trucks, you know, to the more sophisticated compactor type garbage trucks, you know, we've seen uh, the most sophisticated designs move way up the ladder to products like an AR450 or even a 500 you know, because they'll oftentimes have high pressure devices cramming the trash from one end to the other. 
you know, to the very lowest end, just open uh, truck uh, elliptical or square body hauling loose waste. Uh, certainly there's wear in those cases, and oftentimes corrosion resistance from a number of elements within the trash. Uh, we'd love to talk to you about the best fits. We handle most of those products. Okay, this next question is for Don. Don, do you see actions to improve the supply chains already starting and will we see improvement? We have heard from people that if they expect that the supply chain situation you know, peaked as far as worse goes, as far as tightness goes in November, which is good news. However, the, um, the improvement has been very slow since then. So we've seen improvement since November. We've seen it in the trailer market uh, just about that time. But again, very, very slow progress. Uh, the, the purchasing manager's report from two months ago indicated that the supply chain situation was improving. However, uh, the recent purchasing manager's report did not show um, much progress beyond that. So yes, there is an improvement. However, it's not nearly enough. It's not happening strong enough and it's not happening fast enough. However, <laughs> we are moving in the right direction. So we hope that that could pick up soon. Okay. Edward, next question is directed towards you. Are there any plans to go wider on 1.8 V450 by 80? It would be fantastic if we uh, achieved that capability to do so. But at present, uh, I think we are limited to the size chart that we displayed. Okay, perfect. Um, next question I am going to direct towards Edwin again. Um, Edwin, do you offer blasted and primed? Um, no, we do not. And, and there's, a, there's a good reason for that. It, uh, I think we have a perfectly beautiful product as it is. Uh, so it doesn't need blasting. Blasting will actually only uh, increase uh, the roughness of the surface. Uh, so it will be basically de detrimental treatment. Uh, so we do not advise uh, that condition. Okay, Gordon, next question I am going to direct to you. How will custom lengths impact my design and production? Well, the biggest impact, the biggest financial impact will be you don't have to buy a 240 or a 288 long when you need a 220 or a 160 or some other malt. Uh, anytime you buy a product in strip mill coming out of a coil, you're gonna enjoy that benefit. It's one of the key features that will uh, save you money and speed up your own processing time in your shop. Okay, perfect. Our next question um, is um, for the Velast side. I'll uh, direct that towards Edwin. Is Velast 450 easily weldable and formable? Do you help with setting up welding and bending requirements? Is it easy to weld to grade 50? Um, it is a, a workshop friendly material, as we've just uh, explained, it, it, it can be bent uh, because it's a strip mill product. It has uh, consistent properties from sheet to sheet, uh, as opposed to um, a plate material that is rolled individually. So the properties will differ from plate to plate, uh, which probably means you need to Puts around with your uh, press brake to uh, to have a consistent result. With a, a coil-based product, you will you will not have that. Um, welding parameters for this material are available. Uh, there there are good weld solutions. There is good weld wire uh, that will that will bridge 50 to AR450 or 100 to AR450. There are solutions for all those uh, for all those questions. Okay, Don, our next question is for you. How will utilizing electric vehicles or driverless trucks impact fleet companies' orders in the near future? Well, we're still looking at, at the electric truck about how fast the implementation will, will come on. 
So that is going to be a factor. Um, it got delayed some during the pandemic. We expect it to, to grow, but the infrastructure has to be in place first. So there's a lot of factors happening right now that will lay the groundwork. Um, and, and so we're going to see a gradual adaptation like any new technology. Again, we don't have numbers on that yet. We will have them soon. Uh, and the driverless truck is, um, I, I think, is, is out um, out of ways. Uh, you, you may see some platooning soon, but that's I, I look at driverless trucks as being highly regulated. And so um, nothing happens in the government quickly right now. So I would expect that, you know, th that's on the table, that's being developed. You can develop all the technology you want until it's approved for use, um, it's going to be limited. All right. Gordon, our next question is for you. Is AR steel much more expensive than T1? Does it come in plat and flat, bar, or just plate? Uh, prices vary so much, but broadly speaking, strip mill AR is going to be less expensive than T1 plate, or A514, which is its ASTM uh, specification. As far as flatness goes, you're going to see similar flatness from both products. You're going to surface, you're going to see much better surface from the strip mill product, much better gauge control, and a better cost overall in terms of its fabrication and initial values. Okay. Our next question um, is also related towards weight, and I'm going to drag that towards you, Gordon. How much weight can I expect to drop from my trailer by switching to strip versus discrete? So much of that depends on you as an OEM and your specific design and, what, and how you test it. You know, we'll see people quickly drop. 316 is generally the thinnest you can buy Q&T plate. It's a 187 nom. We see a lot of customers saying, boy, I'd just like to take enough out to, you know, to take some weight out of the vehicle and lower my cost. How about a 170? Sure, a 160, absolutely, a 140. If you take it all the way down, we had one customer say, how light will you go? We said 118, he said, that's what I want. Well, there are other considerations, you know, and he put a bunch of trailers into the field and found that in some cases that much of a gauge deviation was okay, and in some cases it's not. That final decision has to be driven by the OEM, but you see what we're offering, and we can talk about what we're seeing others do against your specific type of trailer if you would like. Within the limits okay. of confidentiality, uh, of course. Of course, all right. Very good. Well, we are coming up towards the end of our time. So I just want to say thank you again to Don, Edwin, and Gordon for sharing your time today. And thank you to Steel Warehouse and Tata Steel for sponsoring this event. I also want to point out that there are several resources available under the event resources tab. And if you want to receive Edwin and Gordon slides, please contact Steel Warehouse. Again, we did show that email address, but I'll um, say it again. It's inquiries at steelwarehouse.net. And as Don said, you can access his slides at www.ftrintel.com slash TBM 2022. And this concludes our time together. Today's webcast will be available online at no charge on the Truck and Trailer Bodybuilders website. And thank you to our viewers for joining us today. We hope you'll join us for another webcast again in the future. Thank you. Thanks, Mindy. We'll look forward to hearing from you.